How's it going, YouTube? Today we got transmission parts in the mail. It's a good day. And uh, we'll go over a little bit of what we got here and uh, how much the kit was I got, where I got it from, and what all they included. <laughs> to it see what all we got now this was one of the kits that came with like most everything you need to actually rebuild the transmission um, there's really, I mean you can get kits out there for like 180 bucks or whatever but uh, it, they don't include like all of your components so this one comes with complete bushing kit so you got all your you got your center support bushings in there, you got your pump bushings, you got your sun gear tube bushings, all the bushings you need to rebuild the transmission in this kit. They also give you a new thrust washer kit. Now they are all steel washers in there. All your thrust washers, um, your one thrust washer there between the uh, Center support goes up in there behind the center support. That's in there. Um, the only thing this does not come with, you see there, it says without selectives, right, right there. So if you need to adjust any of your clearances, like between your, you know, the pump and the forward drum, or output shaft you may have to shop around find I think transport warehouse has them um, there's a couple other places out there I'll I'll link it in the description where you can find different components that are selective you know which basically means they're different thicknesses so you can set clearances in spec this was also a kit one of the kits I found that came with all new Torrington bearings uh, these are Koyo bearings I guess that's how you pronounce it I don't know I don't speak Japanese um, but that is all new Torrington bearings in there which the ones that were in this didn't look terrible you know they weren't like rough or anything like that they weren't missing any bearings they were the high needle count there are you will find some that have like only a couple of needle bearings in it and then one looks like like the entire thing is needle bearings so these are the higher count needle bearings we have sealing rings you know for like your your pump sealing rings your center support sealing, sealing rings uh, looks like there's a couple in there for maybe the accumulators rubbers right make sure you buy a kit with rubbers don't ever go and don't buy cheap rubbers okay we all know if you buy cheap rubbers you end up costing you more money down the road now this kit the reason I went with this one is because we got Alto Red Eagle clutches high performance clutches and we got Colleen steels all right so, and this is, this is a three stack intermediate, and we got five direct clutches, five forward clutches, the steels to match, and they do send a wave plate steel in there. Um, I would assume they probably want to see you run this, say like in your forward drum, which your in any forward gear that drum is engaged and they do that I don't know if you can see it here in the camera or not see how that that plate doesn't sit flat against the other one you know, 
kind of wavy. They do that so that when that clutch engages, it has to, it, it kind of acts like a spring in there and softens that engagement up. Um, we're not building this transmission for soft shifts, so I'm not going to be using that. Um, what I will do is, I don't think they left a steel out. I think all the steels are in there. So we'll either use just a regular steel in it, or if I don't have it, I'll just snag a steel out of what came in this transmission, put that one against the piston, and start your clutch pack from there. And we'll make sure this thing shifts every gear solid. Your intermediate steels have like these holes in them. And on the Alto site, they call it like their turbinator steel, intermediate clutch. Um, my guess would be that they put the holes in here just so to allow quicker engagement of that clutch to get the fluid out from between your clutch disc and your steel, you know, when it engages. So that's my best guess. I'm, honestly, I didn't look it up, so. I might be talking out my butt too. I don't know. Um, anyhow, why did I go with the Alto clutches and the Colleen steels? Um, basically, I was looking around. A lot of guys building race transmissions are recommending them. Um, other companies out there like Ray Bestis, the Ray Bestis Blue clutches I hear are pretty good from guys I've talked to. Um, I don't know. I don't build transmissions for a living. I'm going off of what I've seen the majority of people using in high performance rebuilds and they're running these. So at least in the world of TH400 rebuilds. So anyhow, as far as kits go, um, after searching online, trying to find out what I wanted to go with, I feel personally that for $225, this is a very inclusive kit. Um, it is one of the only kits I found that's going to give you new thrust, or yeah, new Torrington bearings, all your thrust washers, all your bushings, your sealing rings, um, gaskets, seals, and that you're going to get choline steels, red alto clutches. Both bands, this is a heavy duty band in the rear and they also supply you with your front band with the red clutch material also if you're going to use that. Um, and I think for $225 it's a, a pretty inclusive kit. You, can, you might be able to, you know, you get inside your transmission and say, you know, well, the Torrington bearings are pretty good. Um, the bushings don't look bad. Uh, you know, everybody's going to have a different level of what, you know, maybe you're just freshening your transmission up and you just want to put, you know, a set of clutches and steels in or whatever. You can find lesser uh, priced kits, but for a higher performance kit, um, this is what they call their stage two kit. It's supposed to be good for like seven. 50 horsepower or something like that. Um, I think it's a pretty inclusive kit, and uh, it's it's fairly you know it's fair priced for for everything you're getting. Um, now you also get the filter and the uh, red stripe modulator, the adjustable modulator. So you know shop around. Let me know if you find a better price on stuff um, that includes as much as this does. Um, there are obviously different level, you know, you can get, you can stack more clutches, more steels, and, you know, your different clutch packs. Um, I went with a 355 clutch pack stack, uh, just because of, you know, to, to stack more clutches and steels, unless you're spending big money to buy aftermarket drums or, you know, machined pistons and stuff like that the way they'll do it is they'll run thinner steels your steels is what's going to pull the heat out of your train your clutch packs 
So running thinner steels means more heat build up in your clutch pack. Um, take that into consideration as far as what your vehicle is going to be used for. Are you just racing it or is it going to be a street car or is it, you know, like mine's a street car but it's going to see some track time. So I want something that's going to hold the power when I put the power to it at the track. But something that's going to also be able to take the heat of driving around on the street constantly. You know, at the track you make a pass, you take it back to the pitch, you got half hour, 40 minutes that you're, you know, waiting around between rounds, and the transmission has time to cool down. So, you know, take that kind of stuff into consideration, you know, sometimes more isn't always better. Um, Turbo 400s are pretty stout transmissions, the way GM built them, so, um, I think they'll, they'll do pretty well as long as they're put together right and you pay attention to your clearances and stuff and the, it'll serve you many years of fun. So anyhow, that's uh, about the update on where I'm at with the transmission. I just got the kit in a couple of weeks or so. I'm going to order the valve body, get that here. Um, I'm looking at rollerizing the front clutch hub and maybe putting an aftermarket input shaft and forward drum in this. Um, I'm on the fence about it. Like I said, the car sees more street time than it does track time, but I also don't want to have, you know, in my mind be worrying about, you know, is it going to strip the, the forward drum out, you know, when I launch it on the trans brake or something like that. I'm sure that look, you go racing, something is bound to break. So wherever the leak weak point is that's that's you know what's gonna break and um that's racing you know what i mean so uh I, I i'm gonna i don't know yet you know that that front input shaft and forward drum assembly is i think ck performance has it for like 200 bucks is like the first level they go up like you know Vasco steels or the 300M and you know they go up in price dramatically um, but that's kind of like a anything above 650 horse they want you know say you should run an aftermarket input shaft forward drum um, we'll see maybe I put it back together and we just see what a stock one will handle you know I don't know I, I, I don't want to have to do this twice but uh, time will tell so anyhow thanks for watching um, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, share the videos around if you find them, you know, somewhat helpful, and thanks for watching.